Hi, I'm Mary Morrissey. In the next few minutes, I'm going to give you the very first two, but yet highly critical steps for how you can live your dream life. This is the first of a four video series where I'm going to walk you through a whole understanding, experience, and very simple but highly effective steps for how you can literally live the life that you would love living. How you will learn how to take those ideas that are maybe and someday and I sure hope and literally translate those into the landscape of the life that you are living, into living a life that you really do dream. Someday could be yours and what if we could shorten that someday and really have it be way sooner, way more fun and way easier. So welcome to this four part video series. So the first of the two critical uh, dream building steps is to really pay attention to your deep desire and your great discontent. So you do, these are two critical factors in both uncovering and discovering what it is that you would love your life to be like. The desire is the longing that we have. It's that longing for, oh, wouldn't it be wonderful if I had room to move in the house in which I live or a backyard for my child to play in? Or what if I had a car that I wasn't worried would be breaking down? Or what if the business that I've built could really 10X this year, it could really become 10 times what it's been? What if, what if? Those longings of possibilities are very important to pay attention to. Once we begin to identify a longing, we want to move that into a crystal clear clarity of the version of itself. If in fact this came true, what would it look like and what would it be like? Many people say, oh, someday I'm going to have my dream house. Well, what would a dream house be like for you? Because your dream house and my dream house will be very different. When someone says, oh, imagine going to a master builder and say, build me a dream house. Even if that master builder has all the money in the world and all the real estate in the world, they cannot build you your dream house unless you describe to the master builder, my dream house has three bedrooms and two baths, five bedrooms and six baths. It's on a mountain and it's overlooking a big valley and there's great big fir trees. Oh, I love the desert. It's over the desert and there's a great big lake out in the back of my boat at the dock. You decide. But until no dream, here's the important thing, no dream can come true unless you dream it. And you have the capacity through your imagination to dream up first in the imaginal state, any life you would love living. And here's the sad fact. Most people spend more time planning a weekend trip than they spend, than they spend investing in and dreaming their life, but not you, not now because you're here. So you want to bring some clarity to the definition of your desire. And you want then to also pay attention to what is it that really causes me to just have time fly by. That's a clue because many people say, well, I don't know what I want. I don't know if I want a dream house. I mean, I, I like many things. I, I like writing. I like spending time with my kids. I'm, I like all of this. I don't, I don't know if, that, if that's really my dream. I'm going to suggest to you that in the application of learning how to be a dream builder and how to live a life that you love living, it's okay to experiment. It's okay to explore and the first place you explore is in your imagination. So put on some possible futures. What if I did live by a lake? And then imagine it. Would that feel good to you? And another clue, and you can explore the clues, imagine into the clues. Here's another clue for knowing your dream is what are you doing when time just seems to fly by? What is it that you participate in or, or activities that you do and who you're hanging out with where it just the time flies, you're just in the flow. Those are good clues to what it is that you love being and doing. So I always tell my clients and my friends when they're asking me to help them build their dreams is let's start with what you know for sure. What you know for sure is around your health and your relationships, what you're doing with your time and talent, what you would love your time and your money freedom to look like, what you would love your philanthropy to be. So this is how we pay attention to the first important signal from our dream, which is our desire. And equally important to that is to pay attention to our discontent. Your discontent is a sign from the very being that you are, from the very thing breathing you. You can't make yourself breathe one breath. You can't even make your heart beat by yourself one time.
So the very life living you, that life is seeking a freer, fuller, expanded expression of itself by means of itself. And that's you and that's me. So life ever sends us signals of more of this, less of that. And the less of that, and the not so much of this, of, oh, I'm tired of this, is life a signal to us that life feels hemmed in. It feels condensed. It feels struggling. And that struggle, if we do not find a way to release the life that's living us into a more expanded version of itself, what will happen is that squeezed life, that forced, uh, condensed life, must then symptomize in some form of problem to get our attention that we need a redesign, we need a refocus, we need a new dream that life can flow through to live a higher, freer, fuller version of itself. So the longing, that desire is very important, but so is the discontent. Pay attention to your discontent. And if my discontent were answered, the antidote to my discontent, if I feel struggling with money, the antidote to my discontent is, what's the amount of money in my bank account? Where I would feel, okay, this is great, this is easy. And what happens for many people at that point is they say, a billion dollars. I want a billion dollars in my bank account. I'm used to making 40,000 a year, 50,000 a year, but a billion dollars, that would answer my discontent. I know, I mean, sure it would. But in an organic evolving universe, you and I, will do a whole lot better if we don't just dream with the desire and the discontent. But right behind that, we set an R, we set a realistic version of the next stage of my becoming completely free in money. If a billion dollars is my goal, then perhaps one idea would be, and if I generated an extra $50,000 this year and next year, would that be more free making? Of course it'd be more free making. If you had an extra $50,000, would you not feel more free? Would you not have options and opportunities that you don't have unless you allow yourself to dream an extra 50? And once you start to multiply, you'll see how fast you can get to whatever goal you set for yourself. But you can't trick your subconscious mind. The part of you where your believing occurs is in the subconscious part of ourselves. We can set a conscious goal, but we have to have subconscious agreement in order to release the full potency of the soul force that is required to translate that dream from its invisible state into its visible, measurable result. So you want to pay attention to your desire and your discontent. Set some sequential, realistic steps that you can take towards that dream. And then in the next video, in the next video, I'm going to show you how you can absolutely overcome whatever might cause you the little setback to things that can occur, the small difficulties or sometimes big along the way of dream building so that you keep your dream alive and how you keep going and how you keep being motivated. So this video leaves you with the opportunity to play in your imagination, play in that imagination. Next time when you come and we get together, I'll show you how to make sure what you've imagined stays alive and keeps evolving and coming forward. Because our goal here is to take the dream you're dreaming and turn it into the life you're living. Have a great day.